Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. Tonight I'm going to be making an interesting dish from Malaysia called Ayam Gulai Lemak Sili Patties, or literally translated, Fatty Chicken with Chili. Now the reason I'm doing this is because some time ago, one of my subs suggested to me that I make Malaysian food because I make a lot of Asian foods. And she said, her name was Dia, she said, why don't you make some Malaysian food? So I answered her back, I said, like what? And she said, why don't you make something like Nazi Lamak? And so I promised her I would do it, and some time ago I did it, and found that Nazi Lamak was the national dish of Malaysia. And I made the dish, and the response was amazing. I mean, I get responses on my Asian foods, but the responses I got from the Malay people were just fantastic on the Nazi Lamak. I started getting more and more requests. So one of my subscribers, a girl named Farah from New Rule Farah, she does makeup and she reads books and I like her a lot. I always stop by her channel to see what she's reading. She said, why don't you make something like Ayam Gulai Lamak Sili Patties? And I was like, okay. So I did some research and found that it was very difficult to find a good recipe in English so I asked her for some help to formulate a recipe because she told me within the country of Malaysia there are many states and each state makes the dish a different way and because I don't like explicitly copying somebody else's recipe, I like doing my own, I needed her help to get some information so that I could bring some of the attributes from all the states in Malaysia or from many of them to make my version of Ayam Gulai Lamak Sili Patties. And that's what I'm going to make for you tonight. Malaysian comfort food, Malaysian soul food. The Ayam Gulai Lamak Sili Patties is going to be served with a side dish of Sambal Goreng Telur, which is fried eggs in a chili sambal. It's going to be delicious. Stay tuned as usual with YouTube, 15 minutes. Let's get going. I'll see you on the other side. All right. The first order of business is we need to make a sambal, okay, a fresh sambal. So into this food processor, I am putting 25 red Thai bird chilies, okay. This is going to be a little bit spicy, but the red adds some really nice color. And to that, I'm going to put a dozen hazelnuts. Now, I couldn't find the traditional nut called a candle nut. I could have used a kukui nut, but I couldn't find that either. But as far as recipes are concerned, the hazelnut works just fine. And into that some garlic, and this is fresh turmeric root. Oh, this stuff smells so good, it's ridiculous. Okay, so into the processor goes the base ingredients for my sambal. And I'm going to grind that up. Okay, now what I've done here is after all those ingredients were chopped up, it began sticking to the sides of the processor. So I added about one ounce of chicken stock and about one ounce of coconut milk. Because what I want to do to this sambal is I want to make it into a smooth paste. And there it is. Okay, and there it is, a nice smooth paste. And we're going to move on to the next step, and we're going to cook this. All right, now remember, the ingredients in this sambal, in the processor, are raw, so I need to cook them. And I'm going to cook them on a medium-high heat, okay? Right now, this is a raw sambal, and there is a difference between raw and cooked sambal and I'll leave a little note about that in the description along with the recipe for this dish but there's a difference in Malaysia and other countries that use sambal there's a difference in the use between a cooked sambal okay, and a raw sambal this happens to be a raw sambal that I need to cook so I'm going to stir it into the oil and I'm going to cook it for about two minutes, maybe three, 
until it's nice and fragrant using a nice neutral cooking oil. Do not use olive oil. Vegetable or canola. I'm using canola because of the high heat point. So I'm going to cook this for about two or three minutes and then we're going to move on to the next step of adding the chicken. Alright, it's been about a minute and a half and I'm still cooking. Okay. Add a little bit of salt and a little bit of white or black pepper to taste. Okay. Add a little salt, a little pepper to taste. Okay. Okay. These ingredients are starting to darken up and turn into a cooked sambal. And I'm going to cook them for about another minute or two. And then we're going to start adding more ingredients. Alright. So, the sambal has been cooking for about three minutes and I'm going to add my chicken. Now, a lot of recipes call for chicken breast, okay? I don't like chicken breast. Some of the recipes call for bone-in chicken. And to tell you the truth, I like dark meat. And my local Mexican supermarket sells whole leg quarters with the bone out, okay? the most delicious chicken I've had. Dark meat, leg quarter, bowing out is fantastic for this recipe and many curry recipes. So now I'm going to cover this chicken, these pieces of leg quarter. It's about three pounds here. It's a lot of food. Okay, I'm going to get all this chicken coated in this lovely sambal and cook it up for about two minutes and move on to the next step. Oh God, my neighbor's going to come banging on my door. They do it almost every weekend. I turn the All right. chicken's been cooking for about three minutes and I'm going to add one can of organic chicken stock. Okay, okay here we go. Now, at this point, I'm also going to add some lemongrass, lightly crushed, because it's so, so fragrant. Oh my God. Okay. And I'm going to make a little reservoir, and right here, a piece of whole tamarind. Okay. Farah told me to use that. I was going to use pulp, and she said no. No, 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 no. Use a piece of natural tamarind because the flavor that you need for this dish doesn't come from pulp, it comes from the skin of the tamarind. And when this is done cooking, I'll discard that piece. So I got a piece of tamarind, and here we go. Look at this color. All right guys, the chicken's been cooking in the sambal and stock for about five minutes, okay? Look at the color, okay? This orange red color from the turmeric and the chili. And I tasted it, and yes, it's spicy. And everybody knows I like heat. And I got a few friends coming over, so they're gonna like it too. But now, what I need to do is add the coconut milk. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I need roughly two cups of coconut milk, okay? Most of the cans are about 14 ounces. So, I'm gonna add a little bit over two cups, okay? Because it's gonna reduce, okay? It's gonna reduce. Two cups being 16. And I basically put in here a can and a half. So 13, about six, about 19 ounces, okay? but it has a beautiful color. Beautiful color, look at this. And the reason I added the extra coconut milk for this recipe is because about three to five minutes before I'm ready to plate this recipe, I'm gonna add another thickener. The sambal had hazelnuts as a thickener and it's done a wonderful job, okay? but about three to five minutes before I'm ready to plate this dish, I'm gonna add something called potatoes. Because Farah in Malaysia told me this dish 
goes best with potatoes. Okay? Potatoes and rice. Well, that's a lot of starch for me, so I didn't make any rice. If you want to make rice and add the potatoes, fine. Or if you want to do the potatoes and forego the rice, either way. I decided to go with the potatoes. Okay? So I added the extra coconut milk because by the time I'm ready to plate this and I add the potatoes, the potatoes will thicken up this sauce and add a richness to the whole dish. Ah, this whole house smells wonderful. So I'm going to let this simmer for between 20 and 30 minutes and then I'll be back to add the potatoes. Okay guys, so the chicken and the sambal been simmering for about 30 minutes. The coconut milk and chicken stock has reduced. And I scraped that fond off the sides because that's flavor. And I'm going to plate this in about five minutes or so. But before I do, I'm going to add some potatoes that I previously boiled to al dente. Okay. And I'm going to raise the heat and the potatoes are going to act as a thickener and I'm going to cook this for about another five minutes, maybe ten, with the potatoes because the potatoes are slightly undercooked. You have to cook them undercooked because you don't want them turning into sludge in this curry recipe. Okay? So potatoes, aloo in curry. Okay? So I'm going to bring this up to a boil and reduce it to a simmer. Cook it for about five, maybe ten minutes. I'll have to sample a potato every now and again. And then we'll be ready to plate up. In the meantime, I'm going to get ready with the sambal tulur the fried eggs. Okay guys, the gulai lamak is done and I'm in the middle of making the goreng talur. And here go the fried eggs. Oh yeah. Okay. Fried eggs. And here go some onion rings. And I'm going to saute these onion rings, eggs, and sauce. And then I'm going to serve it on a plate. This is our side dish. All right, so now I'm going to add a little bit of fish sauce. And a little bit of molasses for the sugar content. I could use palm sugar, but I don't like using palm sugar. It's a pain in the ass to prepare, and sugar is sugar. Okay. And then a little bit of tamarind pulp. And I'm going to stir this sambal. Oh, good, good. All right. And this sambal goreng telur will be ready in about five minutes as the onions soften up and then we'll be ready to plate up. Alright guys, so there you have it. I am Goulet Lamac Sili Patis, right here. Fatty chicken with chili and potatoes and right here, Sambal Goreng Telur, fried hard boiled eggs with fried onions as a side dish. This is Malaysian comfort food. This is Malaysian soul food. I'm so looking forward to digging into this because this is my dinner. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Okay guys, so there you have it. Malaysian food. I am Gulai Lamak Silipadi and Sambal Goreng Telur. Okay, two very popular Malaysian comfort foods Malaysian soul food as far as I'm concerned. Very delicious. I want to thank Farah for suggesting it 
and I want to welcome all my Malaysian viewers to check it out and thank you very much for the support that they've given me. I'll see you guys on the next video. I want to thank you for watching. Take care. See you soon.